Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Sideline Eye podcast. Um, we have another Dream Team edition lined up this week. And um, joining us is Grange and our master, Ethan Raverty, who also featured for Jordanstown in the Sigerson Cup. Um, so thanks very much for joining us, Ethan, and coming on to discuss your no Dream Team with us. No worries. Thanks for having me. Um, I suppose to, to start, Ethan, um, obviously Armagh is back in Division 1 now, um, back training um, soon enough, back playing games soon enough as well. How good is it to get, get back up, firstly, to get back up in Division 1 and how much are you looking forward to getting to it? Yeah, well, it's, it's great. Obviously, it's been over the last number of years, like it's been a main goal of ours just to get Armagh back where it was like. So a couple of years before, I started Warma, like they were Division 1 and pushing for Ulsters and stuff like that. So we haven't really hit them heights um, since then. So it's, it's good to get back, like whatever format it's going to be. It's looking like it's just we're playing the North teams for Division 1. Um, but it's good to see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel and been a long way pre season, just an individual program. So it'll be good to see all the boys soon and have a rattle at it. And as you say, back to Division 1, like that's where you want to be. And, Test yourself again the best. I suppose you mentioned that there are a lot sort of many Ulster Championship in Division One that is yeah. in along with Donegal, Throne and Monaghan. I know fans are sort of disappointed that they're not going to get Armagh playing the likes of Dublin and Kerry. What what do you feel or how, how does the players feel? Is it just a case of playing Division One football more importantly than playing the likes of Dublin and Kerry? Um look, it's a bit of a mix, like um you want to play them teams like there's no doubt in that. Um, like Dublin's obviously been kingpins for the last six seven years. Carries carry like you'd want to have a goal at these teams. Um, but like like throwing money on Donegal, like we've we've been playing them this past couple of years, and they've always been. We obviously had that disappointing game against Donegal last year. But they've always been competitive games, tough games, and that's what we're going to be playing again and come out to the championship this year so it'll, it'll be a good preparation for the championship when it comes but like, I'll be just fine for fans even in the sense they mightn't get to it but at least like it's it's going to be competitive football and they're going to be tough matches and that's sort of what we want to be doing like playing that level of football so yeah it is disappointing not playing Dublin and Kerry in that uh, but you just have to take it as it comes and um it's not too long on the way, like a month or so, like we're ready to go, hopefully. I suppose the goal ultimately this year is staying up in Division 1 and I suppose once that's secured, then seeing what else can happen. Yeah, that's look. That obviously, you, you don't want to be going up and coming back down again, but you want to be targeting, like with three matches, um, you want to be targeting trying to get into the top half, I think. The talk is we play the three matches, and so if you're top two, you play in a semi final, I think, and then bottom two play relegation battles. So you want to try and finish them top two, and then you might get the chance to play Dublin or Kerry. So that'll, that'll be obviously a, a bonus turret to, to get playing the end teams again, but it's definitely within our hands to push towards that semi final final spot. So I don't see why not we can't make it. So like it, and plus everybody hasn't been training really together for close to six, seven months. So we're all going to be in the same uh, playing field. So definitely can, definitely can uh, push towards the National League semi-finals there, you know. Well, definitely. We're, we're all looking forward to the, the county action getting yeah. back. Um, I think it's only a month away now, so it's not too long to wait. But as I said, Ethan, you're on with us today to talk about your dream team. And we'll take a look at it here now. And we talked about the likes of Monaghan there playing them um, this year. You have a Monaghan man in, in Nets here. You have Roy Began. You played with him in Jordanstown. Yeah, Roy was doing Nets. Um, I was only there for two years. Um, but he was in Nets when he was there. Um, obviously, he speaks for himself. So, Calibre, like, he always he has them long kickouts. Um, I think we. we he didn't so much hit the free kicks for us at the time, but he was always able to hit half forwards, full forwards with kickouts. But he also had that in his locker to hit the short ones too. So, um, yeah, Roy's, Roy's a great asset to have on the team. 
Um, plus, he's a serious stature of a man as well. So any high balls coming in, like he was able to um, handle it himself. Um, but that, yeah, it was great. The pass out of half in them two years. Especially I was playing half forward, like, so he was able to kick it out at four, which was good, you know. And we've seen videos of him. I think he scored a point for Scots Town one time in a, in a club game. And yeah, seen him, seen him come so, out. yeah. Did he do that a couple of times in Jordanstown, or was he more uh, let the outfield players play? Ah, he, he didn't come out as far as one point select, but they came out a bit. But it's, it's uh, I said, I don't think he was at the freeze at the time. There was a couple, like, it was, there was quite a few footballers on that team that were great players, like, like Paddy McBrady and Keelan O'Boyle from Derry, actually, he was setting the freeze and stuff for the right hand as well. So, um, there was a lot of players there, like. Uh, so we we'll see our full back line here then, Ethan. You have Grangeman, Mark Toll in a cornerback. Um, he's also in the RMA squad now. You have Brendan Donaghy at three. And the last cornerback, you have Troll Man, Ronan McNamee. Yeah. Um, diverse enough full back line. Uh, I suppose Mark's been playing most just for the club. Um, it's a big figure for us over the past couple of years there, which is why he got the call up last year after our Championship run, he got a call in like, um, as to do, we always call him Sparky growing up, like, he's a cousin of mine. So, the, um, so the speed was unbelievable, like, and then started getting a bit stronger in that. And he actually always played, would have played half back for us. Um, but the nature of the speed he had, like, he was always great, we man marker in the corner. He probably not like playing there, like, but. Yeah, he's been a great asset for us the past couple of years. Like, and he's just he's coming on and coming on. And same way you could probably uh, catch someone maybe a foot taller on him, you see a sleep on him. Um yeah, Mark's Mark will be the man marker in there and that thing. Been brilliant for us the past couple of years. Like. And Donahue, full back, he's obviously played numerous positions for Armagh and he's been about for whatever the guts of 15 years, maybe playing for Armagh. Yeah, Brandy, um, He's, uh, like he's wearing six there in that photo. Like he has, he's been playing sort of everywhere for Armas past couple of years. Um, but like anytime I was playing full forward, maybe in training that he was full back and it was always a serious task he had in your hands. Um, because he's Randy, Randy, you know, he just he has that a winner's instinct, you know, and he's always doing stuff to try and try and put you off and like. Turn of pace is actually, he's very, very fast. Like a lot of people might give him credit for that, but his turn of pace is very quick. Um, but like, uh, he's definitely was the hardest ones to be marking in training. And um, also, he's got a serious, he's a serious eye for cutting out the ball. You know, he's very, very smart that way. Um, player coming in, he can really marshal the boys in front of him as well. And um, he's definitely been stalwart for him in his past 10 years, like in defence. And Ronan McNamee, you'd have played with him in Jordanstown. He's sort of Throne's go-to man marker, I suppose. He has been their full-back now for a good few years. One of the, one of the first names on the team sheet, probably. Uh, he's been, yeah, he's been, he's been good, great for Throne. Like, um, I was playing him again then a couple of years in Jordanstown. Uh, he was playing full-back, maybe cornerback as well. And we played UCD. I think he was lined out a cornerback. Um, but again, like he's just... He's, He's, he's a strong fella, like, and he, he he's always feel determined. But he also has that bit of an edge to him, you know, like, um, just playing on the line and always, always pushing the boundaries, which just sort of makes him a good, a great full back. Um, he's got a quite left foot on him as well, like, he can, he can kick a ball a good 60, 70 yards, like, and if he ain't got a chance to do it. So, I, yeah, Ronnie, really call him Haggerty, like, whenever he's playing, like, he's, um, he was great then for a couple of years playing for Jordanstein. And then we'll move on to your half back line. You have Aaron Kiernan, um, Aidan Falker, and your own club on Park Raverty, then the half back line. Um, I suppose Aaron Kiernan, you'd have got a couple of years maybe um, a county level with him, would you? Yeah, my first couple of years, um, Aaron was there. Um, he's, yeah, them, and it's, especially coming in, like he was a real. He obviously was a senior figure coming in, um, and he was well known around the country. Like he obviously names fixed for himself. He's one of the best halfbacks 
ever really like in my eyes anyway um, it was great coming in just at that young age that I did um, it was great just to be chatting around the like he was always really dead on you know even in his changing rooms and that um, he had a real elite mindset you know he was always trying to make himself better and so it rubbed off the start you know um, trying, trying to sort of copy some things that he was doing like um, he's, he's a serious asset going forward like um, very very fit he was definitely one of the first players played with um, but as I say like, he's, he's just, it was great to have this experience in that team like when I was coming in someone to talk to and he, he, um, he was always willing to chat to you know and try and make you better as a player and you've been in Falker at centre half back then he's obviously still on the Armagh team and a real leader in the Armagh team at, at this current stage yeah, in um, in uh, he would be one of our. He's obviously one of our senior figures. Like um, he's had a brilliant couple of years. Obviously, it's been well highlighted. Like the exploits he's had with his club, where he's actually full forward. Um, but even just in the arm off setup, like he um, he's he's been brilliant. He he's always um, again the same. A man that's always trying to try new things to get better himself. Um, and he's always coming out with three bits and nuggets of information, you know, where he might have seen or heard through even through his work, you know. He's a, he's a teacher, like, and he's really into trying to educate the students, obviously, but he educates himself on how his performance gets better, and then he he brings that into training sessions as well. Um, but he's he's been brilliant for us, obviously. He's, he had his All Star nomination last year, um, and again going forward. Like when he gets in the forward position, you know, he's a real trusty left foot on him. And he's, he's played there with his club. And um, he's been great. It's a great asset to have, especially in the half back line. Like. And Park Gravely, he's a young club man then from the Grange. Yeah. Um, Park's just Park's one of them players that, like, he gets into that team his own merit, just as, as tan like, but he's just one of them players you go to the gates with, you know. Um, just has that never say never say a day attitude, um, and like, they obviously he's he's our club man. Like he's he's had his trouble and some enough, um, courageous for injuries and that. And the fact that he's still playing and he's still playing at high enough quality for us, um, says a lot about him. Um, a couple of times he's actually was playing cornerback and all, and he would have picked up a lot of main target men when we were coming through into meeting that. He was marked Daddy English. I think he marked Supi. And we played them in the championship. And he's just he's, he's just he's a tough, tough competitor. Like and as I say, like he's one of them players that you like whenever you're in the pits, as some people would say, like he maybe someone you want on your shoulder, like so before he gets in there, like it's a it's a good half back line, like in my eyes, you know. We'll see your midfield here then, Ethan. Um You've now Grimley, obviously your um your share time with him playing for Armagh on Killian Clark, who you played with in Jordanstown. On now Grimley, I, I remember you and him, I think you were the midfield pairn in that great minor game against her own in 2012. I think he's were beat by a point. Yeah, me and I was playing the yeah for a good while now. Like um God, it's a while ago now, 2012, I think that game was, was it? He 2012, was yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we scored 19 points and still wants to get did come out in the wrong end of it. But um, yeah, now has been now has been uh, we haven't done the yeah since we're 16, 17, maybe younger, you know, through the development squads and that, and then playing against each other the clubs. Um, I think and now I think it might be his birthday now in a couple of days time. Like there's only a couple of a week or two between the two of us. Like so. We've been playing the gas since um since sort of put an Armagh jersey on. Um he's an Armagh that's been brilliant for him the past couple of years. Like uh, I don't know how he's just he's for the size of a man, like he's so athletic. He, he could just run all day, run all day. Um and then he's he's got serious, serious feet on him. Like, he's been kicking free for us, you know. Um I suppose Rain's come in this past couple of years and took up free kicks, but now now he's got serious range with his kick. Um, 
and he's, he's, his feeling is brilliant. Like I came in Derry, I remember having to watch it on TV just because of the COVID, but his, uh, he came on and then um, a couple of catches he had was really sort of strengthened our position in the game, you know. Um, so it's not just that he can run, he, he's, he's, he's here set of hands on as well. Um, and it's, it's been any time it was playing midfield, especially in minor ages, it was great playing on, you know. And Killian Clark, he's obviously key for Calvin. He uh, he was part of the team that won those the championship last year, and you'd have played with him in, in Jordanstown as well. Yeah, I actually lived with him first year up. Um, he's a great lad, Killian, yeah. Again, another man, just as fit as a fill. Um, I suppose you're playing more half back, full back, midfield for Calvin, so sort of anywhere. And um, really utility man for him. Um, but just another man that could run all day and is just a real, real strong competitor. Like it's just they put sometimes he put your head his head where you wouldn't put your boot, you know. It's um a couple of years with uh in Jordanstown, he'd have been an I wouldn't say he'd have been an older player, like but he would have been he'd have been a couple of years older than some of the players in that team. There's a group of boys there that were older than um it's just older says than the other lads like um and he he obviously was a driving force on that team. Um serious so he's a good crack of a lad, like you know, he's always up for a bit of crack but when he came down to it and he's playing football, you know, he he always screwed the head in and uh, took people with him. And I suppose you, you can obviously live in with him, you knew him pretty well. Um he's a leader in that Calvin team that as we say went and won Ulster last year. I think he marked Michael Murphy in the Ulster final. He's, he's one of their best players, obviously. Did you see that leadership role in him when you were playing and living with him? Definitely, definitely on the pitch. Like, um, as I say, he was a uh, senior figure, I suppose, within the world I was looking for on that Jordanstown team. Um, and I suppose living with him as well. Like, he... Um, he always looked after himself as well, you know, like living up in Belfast, you know, you can always let things slip with your food and your drinking and going out and doing whatever. And at that age, like he was always looking after himself and sort of seeing the bigger picture in the end up. Um, mind you, he was always like, he was, he was always up for a crack, like with some serious good nights crack in that house, um, even if it was just playing FIFA and stuff like that, you know. Um, but he always he's seen the bigger picture, like you know, it's good, it's good. It's good at that time to be living with other people, like even from different counties or different places. It was just um to see different ways of doing things. Um a bit of an eye opener coming from the Greens, just to live with some lad from Calvin. Like. We'll move on to your half forward line then here, Ethan. And um you've Rory Grugan at 10. If Michal McKenna at 11, under the goals around McHugh then makes up your half forward line. Yeah. Um, I'm much hating that half forward line there. Like, I suppose Roy makes Roy with six foot anyway, at least. Um, but a lot of brains anyway. Like, um, Roy's, um, Roy's been, again, last year was one of his best years playing Warma. Um, and that day game again, he was instrumental in first couple of points, the first half were brilliant. Um he's he's got serious, serious good vision. I suppose him and Michal are very alike in that sense. Um two left footed players, real pick a pass, really kick it through the uh, needle, you know. I am very, very good vision, the two of them. Um and I suppose he Roy's been um instrumental really for us the past couple of years again, a real lead in the RMA team. Um, he was captain there for a year or two between him and Aiden and then Super captain as well and um, it's, it's just been uh, it's also it's also a good out mate you know like we've um, anytime we had to do runs and stuff on our own where you were allowed to start you no know, start a lockdown like we had done runs together um, he's also another man as fit as a fiddle like um, so he's uh Roy's been there. It's great, like. Michal, obviously, he's, uh, he's key to the Granges game. I'm not sure if you got much game time with Michal when he was on the county, but obviously you've been playing him for a couple of years at club level. Yeah. Um, 
suppose me all as a year older than me. You played him the year minor, um, Arma, and then a couple of years on twenty one, and then he was, he was brought in the senior team. Um, we played a couple of years now in fairness together. Um, it was good having him. Like, obviously, been playing with him since even before playing clubs. So he lives right beside my granny's house, so we had him down kicking football with me, him and Kehalak. Uh, and then Colin, a brother of mine, like we'd been down all the time, kicking and messing about. So playing with him for a long time, sort of, especially whenever he was brought in Norma, he's trying to send off forward at him and inside, like, so we sort of knew how each other played, like, so it was great having him because he always sort of, he always knew when he got the ball, where he'd turn left or turn right, like, so it was great having that. And he, he'd always pick a pass, like, he in the same See if I stood up for us at the club a long time. Um, whenever you sort of needed need a ball to be won and, and held up like he was he was good in that sense. Um like a very, very tough competitor. Like Emil could he always would have been on the receiving end of treatment, so to speak, like whenever we were playing, because he was our main player, like and like, he always took it and he always got up and he always played the right pass at the right time. So yeah, that couple of years was great actually having him in um in Warm Alley. And Ryan McHugh, I suppose he's the modern day wing half forward slash wing half back, isn't he? Work rate, speed, good on the ball. He, he sort of has everything for that modern day wing half forward. Yeah, you could really could have really put him in half back or half forward in any team. Um as you say, he has that speed like he sort of he was short in stature, like, but he makes up with it, his intent and his runs and his um his fitness and his speed. Like he's, he's very, very quick to win a pace. I think when you think you're going to get a hand on him, you know, he, he thinks and goes again. Um I suppose he's been like he's been instrumental sort of for Donegal's past couple of years. Um and I'm I'm sure that he'd be he'd be, he'd be there and thereabouts with him for a while to come as well. He was uh, he was in the Jordanstown team and then his, his dad took over. He was one of the managers for a year as well. Um, but it's great not having him on the team because he was always driving up players and other teams would have sort of been focusing on him. Maybe he just would have always and he always would have took the same sort of thing with Michal, like he always would have took extra punishment from other teams, which opened the door for other players. Like he was always willing to take it so that other team other players could maybe step up to the plate and and try and push, uh, push games over the line, you know. Well, full forwards then, um, Ethan with Cahill McKenna, um, an our club mate of yours, and also an our county panellist. Um, you've Niall Medine from down in full forward, and then Ray O'Neill makes up the, the dream team. And as, as we've mentioned, like Cahill McKenna, yourself, and Mark Toll, um, all being on the county at the minute, Me Hall has obviously been, been there in previous years. Um, it's good for the club to have. Um, four sort of county men or county experienced men, um, all having played at, at that standard. Yeah, it's been um, it is it's definitely it definitely brings a team on. Um, but sometimes you can be detrimental, you know, can't you playing club games and that? But like it always brings other players on, um, especially like some Mark and Jahl, um younger lads coming through on our team are seeing what they've done and what they're doing. And like they sort of they're pushing themselves on as well. Um especially with Kjahal, like Kjahal, Kjahal works very, very hard, you know. Um like he's a tradesman um by occupation as well. So like he it's not like as if he, he, he sits around, you know, he, he works hard all day and he'll still go and he'll do his gym session whenever he gets finished work or he'll go and he'll kick about, you know, it's like, that's why he's, that's why he's there, you know, it's, it's that full forward line, it's a very, very hard working full forward line. Um, and like Kjell, like, Kjell, he's, he's very, very fit too, you know, um, but he's there, he's, he's handy enough to have on the pitch if you need a last minute free kick as well, like so. Yeah, Kjell's been brilliant. Been it. It's good to see him in as well. He was away to Australia there for a lot of years. Um, and he's home. And he's, he's hopefully settled in that car again. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he works very hard. Like, and he, 
he'll get his chance and he does and he'll at least going to take it like. And you mentioned a, a last minute free taker. He, he scored the winner for you Thanks. in the Intermediate Champs final in 2019. Oh, I'll forget that one. <laughs> um, and then you, you have Niall Medine full forward. And I suppose Niall Medine, he sort of burst onto the scene for both Jordanstown and, and for Down. And maybe he didn't fulfil his potential or didn't didn't reach the, the levels that was expected of him, maybe. Um, I will look now. As one of them lads, like whenever he, he puts his hand to it, you know, he, he, he'll do very well. I actually played with him in two different teams. He was in, um, he was in the tech for a while. Um, I'd done a foundation degree in Newry and I played with him in that team before going to Jordanstown. But like you could kick, you could kick, kick any ball really in the now, like, and he's, he's going to win it. You know, he's, he's so strong, like very, very, very strong. Um, but he also, he can win a ball down around his feet. Um, so I, like it's, it'd be a, it'd be a dream to have in your team because like if you kick a ball and even if you don't kick connect with it properly like he's still gonna make an attempt to get it and as I say he's strong like and he can hold off really any fullback um, and as I say it's good to have even when we're playing inside you know he he was good good partner up from in full forward you know oh, he yes. actually, he's in New York now like um. He's playing with them. He's playing with the county team in New York that I've seen for a while. So like he's still he's still racking about on that. So yes, I hadn't realised he'd went to New York. I just knew he hadn't sort yeah. of featured for down in the last few years. Yeah. yeah, and then finishing up your full forward line and and your dream team. Then you've Rain O'Neill, who you've obviously been playing with for a couple of years now with Armagh. Yeah, Rain's in a couple of years now. Um. I settled in like just a season professionally, you know. Um again another man you can kick the ball into like and he he make he make something out of an an Aston ball, you know. Um he's great, great feet, tall fella, like and he he's very fast off off the mark as well. Um he's been brilliant for us the past couple of years. He's really he's really grown into that role like a full forward. They also can come out as well, the friends. He's six three, six four, maybe like, and he's just he's getting stronger and stronger. Like he's still very young, so he's um he's, he's definitely been a great addition to the team over the past couple of years. Um, and also it's pushing ways on there as well, like to try and put him out of the team to get in. Like even like myself, sir, have him in the team this last while. Like so, it's, it's he's been he's putting ways in here to the spot. So it's been good that we try and trying to have that bit of a battle and try and get back into the team. Um, but yeah, Rain's, Rain's been a, a great addition over this past couple of years. Like. I will see your subs bench then, Nathan. You have a couple of substitutes here. Um, so you have Blake Hughes, um, Brian Candy and Stephen Sheridan, obviously three Armagh panellists with you. You have David Raverty from the Grange and then Ryan McInesby, who you played with in Jordanstown as well. And I suppose who who was the closest or who will who feel hard done by here for not getting in? I suppose any one of them, like you know, it's a it's a weird enough thing to do that they're picking a team that you've played with, like um, as you say, like through even through like there's been a lot of great players for the Jordanstown team, um, and then there's a lot of ways to through this ninth year, like so there's a lot of men that have played with in Armagh, um, and then even, even the Greens, like there's. There's a lot of men there that you playing with the past, I suppose, 15 years, 20 years. Like, and when you see a lot of football, a lot of people, you see the good in them as well as the bad. Like, so any one of them could sort of get in there. Um, like, Blaine, Blaine's been, Blaine, Blaine's coming on leaps and bounds. Just, you know, um, it's funny enough to tell like, whenever he was first coming in, the arm I set up, um, they're asking about him. He plays outfield with club, like they're asking him playing cues, and he he sort of was telling everybody that he was six foot. And he'd make a great goalkeeper and all, and I like, can't get into the arm ass setup and sort of looking around. Whereas this lad doing that to six foot, he'd be lucky if he had five nine that fella. Um, <laughs> but he he since he's got in, he's been he's nailed it in, like uh, he's nailed that spot down. So his uh, distribution coming out of nets has been. Top class, like and he's getting better and better, like um. So he can definitely feel hard by even not getting them, you know. 
and you've Ryan um, Kennedy and Stephen Sheridan, and then you've played with them for a few years or more as well. Yeah, uh, I don't know how long ago since Kennedy came in, like, um, but again, another man is just he's he's a hard worker, you know. Um, sort of sort of way you don't really want to be marking inside. He'd be um, he'd just be always in contact with you and always on top of you and very menace, you know. Um, but he's uh, he's again as now way like he's he's been a bit of trouble there for a year or two injuries like but when he's fit he's he's in the team you know um he's he's just a real real hard competitor and it's one of the you you want on your team rather than facing them um I suppose bugs sort of same line as now like I've been playing since he's been a year after me it's not our mass setup so I've been playing with him ever since like played midfield a couple of times together. I lived the same house for Killian, like we three of us, and uh, Navin O'Donnell's in that house, and I think Michael Argue from Calvin, like so. Living them, living them for a year there as well, like and again another competitor, like he's always always on the go. Even he's, and it's just it's one of the points actually. I don't think he actually scored the point, but we played Tipperary one time, and I cut him in in the sixty seven, sixty eighth minute, like and we were really. Trying to push for in, there might have been a point or two in it, and he picked up the ball in the lane, like, and instead of sort of trying to hold on to it, he just he went for broke, you know, and like this could have been, this is after six eight minutes of playing football, you know, he, he would have been he'd definitely have been wrecked, but he just knew he had to get up the pitch, like, and and he, he away he went, so he definitely has never stay quit attitude, like, which is why you would want him in any team you go for. It. And Jeremy Rafferty, he he'd sort of be your midfield partner at a club level. Yeah, Jamard's in now a couple of years with the uh, the green seniors. Like he's still a young enough fella, um, but he he's yeah he's a dream to have just with playing in midfield. Um, again another way like he, he's always he always has your back. Like um, Jamard is he's young like, but when he's on the football fields, he he has a wise enough head on him. Um, and again he is. He's always willing to work, like, and he's always willing to learn. Um, and he's he's definitely going to be a great addition for us. Like, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised, like, if he keeps his head down, like, he'd be in an normal setup, no problem, in a couple of years time soon, sooner than that, like, um, he's 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 another way that's willing to learn, like, um, and get better and get better, and he's only going to do that, like. And Ryan McInnesby, he was another one of your Jordanstown teammates. Yeah. Played around, it's done a couple of classes actually around in um university. Like um another man like he's real same sort of type of players around Q, I suppose, like he's always on the go and he's always working hard, real industrious player. Um and he's again he's always willing to put himself um put himself forward to better team. Like, you know, he'll he'll be the one to make a break. Breakthrough and then like a pack defense to try and take on a few players to get a few extra yards up the pitch and um very fit fella, you know, and he's he's it's just a nice to sweet player like um and as you say he's, he's just that typical half forward that's just gonna work hard and and just uh, do his best for the team. We'll see your full team here now. Um we'll finish with a few quick five questions to finish every podcast with. And as we look at your team, there's plenty of uh, talent throughout the field. Um, and firstly, who's who's the most accurate player you've played with? We've talked about the likes of Rory Began, um, you know, now Grimley, Ryan O'Neill. Um, you've played with so many good uh, free takers and passers of the ball. I suppose who was the most accurate you've played with? In regards to free kicks and that? Well, free kicks are, are open play. Um. I suppose free kicks. Uh, Rory Rory Briggins, very very good free kick taker. Like um, so this is me and him. Um, been left footed free kick takers for what went out together, and we a wee session that we done, um, nine or ten kicks in certain spots. Like and we always would have been trying to beat each other, and like I can remember, it could be those three kicks at each like twenty seven kicks nine. Nine stations, like he, he he would be hitting 26, 27, like and it was always there's always a bit of crack to see who get better, like and he 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 definitely would be 
most accurate free kick taker that I've played with. Um, I suppose he, he'd probably be very, very accurate. He is very accurate in play as well. Toss up between him and Mihol, like, um, I probably would go with Mihol as an in play accuracy, like, um, like he always he always can see the right pass and when to give it and when not, um, and even when to hold on to the ball, um, to wait for that opportunity to come. I um, definitely Mihol was always the brains of our team, like growing up even at an underage and now it's senior, um, he just sort of one of them players who makes the team tick. And finally, this might generate the same answer. I'm not sure, but who's the best player you've played with? You've played played with some unbelievable talents, obviously. But who's the best? Um, Jesus. Suppose uh, I'd probably go with Aiden Fogger for the sense that, like, he's in there at centre half back on that team, and he's playing centre half back there for us, even sometimes corner back, like. He done, he's done a job on Conor McManus for us before uh, in the qualifiers a year or two ago. Um, I thought he'd done extremely well in Michael Murphy last year. Um, but at the same time, the man plays full forward for his club. Like he's kicked, he kicked one four, I think, in the county final when they won it. You know, like he, he can really play anywhere and he can play anywhere at a high quality. Um, so he'd definitely would be the best player I've played with, I think. Yeah, um, there's been some quality players there. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. Like, his work rate and the fact that he's always he's always been there on top of his game and he's always pushing, which is it's highlighting the fact that he got his nomination last year. Like, and it's the same way he could, he could push on and he get an all star. Like, there's no doubt in that. Um, definitely, Aiden would be would be my pick for especially out of that team. Like, would be the pick of best player I've played with. Like. Good stuff. Thanks very much, Ethan. Um, we'll hopefully see you back on the field now in a couple of weeks playing for Armagh. I think your first game's either the 15th or the 16th of May. Um, I think it's Monaghan in the first round. So um, yeah. we're all looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to um, getting back on the pitch and seeing Armagh back in Division 1. So um, thanks very much, Ethan, for coming on and discussing your dream team. No bother, Sean. Thanks for having me.